Now, unlike the other videos where I've said to you, um, you know, at this point you can stop watching because this isn't going to be on the exam if you don't really care. You got to watch this one. This is hugely important. This is the reason that I talk about the bureaucracy. This is why the bureaucracy is so important. And it's really important, excuse me, it's really important that you understand this. Um, not just for this class, although obviously for this class it's important, but also it's important for you to understand sort of American government and, you know, frequently, like thus far we've been about the, we've been talking about the legislative branch, the executive branch, the executive, um, the judicial branch. The bureaucracy has a bigger impact on our lives on a daily basis than any of the other branch, any of the other branches per se the legislative branch, Congress, or even the president. The bureaucracy is involved in everything on a day-to-day -day basis. And you can go with the examples that I gave before about the, just the, literally the food that you eat is inspected by the bureaucracy, right? Any medications that you, you take have been tested by the bureaucracy and are produced under the eye of the bureaucracy or inspected by the bureaucracy, right? The water that you drink, the planes that you fly on, um, everything is sort of affected by the bureaucracy. So it's hugely important. So keeping that in mind, that's why I talk about the bureaucracy and that's why it's so important to understand it. And that's why it's important to like get rid of the emotional tag that I talked about at the beginning. Um, that's why it's so important to get uh, get rid of the emotional tag so that we can truly understand what the bureaucracy actually is. So, as I often do, I'm going to go back to basics to explain the power within the bureaucracy. So, when Congress passes bills or laws, um, generally what they do is they set out broad policy guidelines. They give a general idea of what the law is, try, what is trying to accomplish. And oftentimes what they'll do is they'll use vague language within the law, not vague in a bad way, vague in a way that is purposely designed to give the experts within the bureaucracy the leeway, the latitude that they need to fill in the details because that's what the bureaucracy does. They're the experts. They're the ones who fill in the details. So for example, I've talked about the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, right? Um, very generally speaking, I'm gonna describe OSHA as being an, uh, uh, an agency that whose job it is to keep workers safe. So by way of an example, just think about Congress creating OSHA, putting it in the Department of Labor, and saying to the uh, in the law, your job is to ensure that workers are safe. Well, what does safe mean? Safe means different things depending on what jobs you're on. When I was a cons when I was working construction sites, safe meant one thing. Right, like so. For example, uh, any time I was working on a commercial site, I had to wear a hard hat. Okay, that was one of the rules that OSHA had come up with in order to ensure that workers are safe on any commercial job site. I had to wear a hard hat. So there was this time where I was working on a job site. You know, I was a plumber. At this point, it was a huge field. And we were putting the pipes in the ground where the building was going to be built on top of. So I'm in a huge field. There's actually one concrete wall 20 feet to my right. There's another concrete wall 20 feet to my left. That's going to be part of the garage below the building, right? And I'm putting in the pipes underneath. There was nothing above me but sky, right? But I had to wear a hard hat because that was the rule. The rule was on a commercial job site, you had to wear a hard hat. The only thing likely to hit my head on that job site was bird poop. 
okay? Because there was nothing above me. I mean, maybe if somebody was like hammering with their hammer and it slipped out of their hand, it could bonk me on the head, I suppose. But the reality is, is that wearing a hard hat was stupid on that job site, but that was the rule. The rule was that you had to wear hard hats on construction sites, but it gets even more detailed than that. Um, after I left the, the um, plumbing industry and I started teaching political science, I looked up OSHA's rules for hard hats, not when you have to wear them, right? But how they're constructed. And in the rules issued by OSHA, it specifies exactly what kind of plastics you can use. It specifies exactly what kind of uh, um, thickness they have to be. For those of you who have worn hard hats before, you know that they don't sit right on your head. There's like a fabric that sits underneath the hat. So the hard hat is sitting on your head, but it's like way up here. Um, and if something falls on it, even something heavy, it's going to bend down, but it's not going to hit your head because that fabric is going to stop it from hitting your head. Well, there are rules on what kind of fabric you can use. There are rules on how you affix the fabric to the head, to the helmet, to the hard hat itself. All these rules. And the, who can do this? Can members of Congress do this? They don't know the different kinds of plastic, how much pressure any of them can take, how to properly affix fabric or plastic to hold the hat above your head, how hard, how high above your head the hard hat needs to be. Members of Congress don't know any of this. And so they write a law that says keep workers, they, they write a law that says keep workers safe. Kind of vague, what does safe mean, right? On a construction site, it was wearing hard hats and what those hard hats need to be made out of. My friend, the one who I was talking about at the very beginning, um, who thought I had called him a name when I called him a bureaucrat, he worked on job sites where they, because he worked for the Department of Defense, where sometimes they would sandblast the paint off of fighter jets and so that they could repaint them again. And his job, he had like a full on like hazmat suit. He had to measure how much particulates were in the air. And if it was too high, whatever the standard OSHA set for too much particulates in the air, he'd shut down the job site, let it, the dust literally settle. And then once it had settled to the uh, an acceptable level, he could go ahead and uh, tell the workers come back in and they can continue working. This is the power of the bureaucracy. They affect everything, but the bureaucracy doesn't pass laws. They issue rules. That's what they're called, rules. They have the authority to issue rules. And these rules are treated exactly like laws passed by Congress and signed by the president. They have that same kind of force. And the bureaucracy is passing rules all the time, all through the pandemic of 2020, 21, 22, and who knows how long it's gonna continue. There were all kinds of rules that were passed by the bureaucracy, by the CDC, by the FDA, on when you could wear a mask, when you couldn't wear a mask, who could get a vaccine, when they could get the vaccines, right? What kind of therapeutics could be used if somebody did get COVID? All this was done by the bureaucracy. That's where the power of the bureaucracy comes in because they affect almost everything. Now, in, in our system, there are always checks and balances. And so Congress can overturn rules passed by the bureaucracy. There are instances where the bureaucracy has passed rules and Congress has said, whoa, 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 and said, no, you can't do that, and prevented them from doing it. The, the bureaucracy has issued rules before where the courts have said, whoa, 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 you can't do that, that's unconstitutional. Or, no, you can't do that, you don't have that authority. So there are checks on the bureaucracy. But the thing I want you to know is one, that they have the power to issue rules. These rules affect almost every aspect of our lives. So, so they're doing things constantly, right? 
But there is a power to go ahead and check them. Congress can do that. The courts can do that as well. And the president can have a role in all that because he's the head of the executive branches that are issuing the rules. So even the president has a role in checking the bureaucracy, although the bureaucracy is typically trying to do what the president wants unless it's one of those independent regulatory commissions. So that's the power of the bureaucracy, and that's really important to know. And when I say really important to know, what that means is uh, it will be one of the questions loaded up into Canvas. Um, whether Canvas will select that for you is a different story. I don't know that. But make sure that you've written out a good answer for the question on the study guide. Okay? Take care. Uh, you know what I realize? I actually like... When I'm talking to my, I'm sitting in my room, right? And I'm talking to a laptop, but it really feels like I'm talking to you. And I hope on your end, it feels like I'm talking to you too. And that I, if, if I'm smiling, I seem like I enjoy myself because I like teaching. And so I am enjoying myself, oddly enough. I think it's weird. If you think it's weird, we're on the same page. Next, we'll be talking about the people in the bureaucracy.